Good afternoon everyone. I know it's been quite a few days since I last uploaded, but I'm still recovering from the flu and I felt like I kind of had to get something up because it's been, it's been way too long and I, I've, I've been missing it. So I'll try to make sure you guys can understand what I'm saying, even though I kind of sound like a 16 year old right now. But apart from that, today we're going to look at a extension to the bookmark script that I wrote a week or so back. This time I'm going to be able to use keywords to use search engines. And I use this quite frequently, and I think you guys will find it quite helpful as well. So let's check that out. So if you watched my last Arch video, you might notice my terminal looks a bit different from then, and so does my uh, status bar. I have switched to i3 blocks from i3 status, and I've changed my color scheme around, and I've got a little power line here. Not important to this video, I'll talk about it in a later rising video. Thought just thought I'd mention it now anyway. So before we get to what the script or how the script actually works, I'll show what it does. So basically similar to the bookmarks one it brings up a prompt. So if we go let's say we want to use the Arch Linux wiki and we want to look for Compton. easy as that. And let's say, let's use an actual search engine like DuckDuckGo and we want to look up the i3 window manager. And as you can see it has spaces in it and spaces in a URL are not the, the greatest thing for some, for some sites to handle. So I have set up a way to deal with those on my end just in case the website doesn't actually deal with them. And as you can see it brings up DuckDuckGo i3 window manager. Simple as that. So I'll show you the actual script. I've got it in my script folder called SCH. So it's a fairly simple script. It's pretty much just an improved version of the bookmark script I showed last time. So we have a sort. So we'll sort the search and we'll set out everything on the right side of the semicolon, pipe that into a D menu and give it the prompt search engine. I know I'm stepping through this fast, but I'll show you guys step by step afterwards. Then I pipe that into an exargs with the dash i command and a um, percentage sign so I can input it into my grep, where I'll grep out the line containing the option selected, and then I will set out the uh, URL. So yeah, let's actually show that in action piece by piece. So I tried for, to actually copy it out of Vim, but for some reason it copies into my clipboard, but not like really into my clipboard. I'll, I'll show you guys what I mean. It's it's a bizarre problem. So if I copy it now, not gonna work. I don't know why. If I just copy it into here, then copy it back out. Let's see if I can do this without screwing it up. So I cut it off camera, but as soon as I said that I'm going to screw it up, I ended up screwing it up. So I've got a copy now. I don't know why my copying is not working out of Vim properly. It works copying into Vim and copying out, but for some reason copying out to the terminal is a problem. I need to look into that. Anyway, you guys have seen none of that pain and now we're going to just run the script so I can have it in my history and then we're going to cut it into pieces. So first up we run a sort, which basically lists out everything, fairly simple. Then with that sort we will set out the names, so we get basically we just cut off everything after this colon here, and that gives us our very short names that we can work with. Then from that we pipe it into a D menu, I don't, oh I guess I can show you that, just brings it up like this. From that we pipe it into an xargs, if you don't know what xargs is or if you've never used it before, basically it lets you build up commands. And this dash i command here, basically what that does, you when you put in dash i you supply a character after that and that's where the value that you've passed into the command will be placed when you place that symbol in a, another command. So basically what I'm doing here is so what comes in from the D menu is a 
value that was selected. Actually, I will just show you that. So when we run, say, arch, it prints out arch. So basically what happens here is arch will get piped into this xargs command and this percentage sign is where it gets placed. So what ends up happening is grep will search for arch colon and when that happens, basically, it selects the line that has the uh, Arch Linux Wiki um, search on it and the obviously the Arch tag on it. And lastly from there, where's my full command? I've lost it. Okay, there. It's, okay, it's back now. And from there, basically what we will do is we will just do that. It will, so after doing all those early commands, we passed into a the last thing we did was pass into a grep. Then we set out the name of it because we don't need that. And basically we've got the URL. And as you can see, it's got this equal sign on the end here. And that's very important because it's very important that search engines are fairly standardized and that makes my job way easier. So if we bring back up my scripts file, uh, my search script again. Okay, I don't care about that. Uh, Edit anyway. So basically now you've got this URL to work with. Then you've got your search here, which this is a much simpler one, so I don't think I'll run it on my, uh, out in the terminal. I think you guys can get it fairly well. So D menu, I don't think you can open without giving it a at least one thing to work with. So I just echo an empty string. And so when you do that, that's why you see that little blue box to the side, that's actually the one option that's there. There's nothing in it because it's an empty string. I don't know if there's a, a better way to do it. Obviously there's probably a program better to use than dmenu, but I have dmenu so I'm, I'm just going to use it. So we will open up dmenu, you put in whatever your search query is here, and then that gets piped into another xargs with my encode script. And what encode does... It is a massive said statement that basically just does HTML encoding, nothing special. I'm not going to step through it. If you want to know about HTML encoding, I might leave a link in the description. It's fairly simple. Basically, it's a way to make sure that characters are properly recognized in a URL and other places on the web, because there's a lot of reserved characters like question marks for query strings and hashes for... Um, locations on a page and things like that and you obviously can't have a space in a URL so there's HTML encoding to actually make sure you can use those values but not end up breaking things on the web so now I should probably go delete that um, so now that we have our URL and our search query both of those get passed into my open brow script so the this one here is the browser you want to use. So I've got mine set up for Firefox. And then if you don't know what how to do string concatenation in uh, shell, is you just you just put the things next to each other. So we've got URL next to my search, which basically just concatenates them together, and that will give us the URL we want to run in our browser. So I'll just quickly show you what the open browse script does. I showed this oh it Initially, this was part of my bookmark script, but I ended up moving it out because it's the same code for both scripts. So basically, it will... So first up, it checks if there's a URL. If there's no URL, it doesn't bother to do anything. And after that, it will just run a simple case statement to work out if, you're, if you've selected a browser that is supported with the script. If not, then it just does some basic handling to just to let you use any browser. I've got Firefox set up like this because I like using tabs with Firefox. I know some people don't like tabs, especially with tiling window managers, but I do, so whatever. Uh, anyway, so I think that might be pretty much everything. The only other thing really is the... What am I doing? Why did I... There, that's better. CFI, if we go down to... What is it? SCH. Yeah, there we go. Basically, I've just got it set to a uh, binding, and I've got that to mod S, which on my computer that is the Windows key or whatever 
whatever you want to call that key. So I can just hit mod S wherever I am and bring that up. And it is the same with the uh, bookmark script. So if you like this video, then remember to like, subscribe, and hit the little bell icon below if you want to see more from my channel. I am not sure when my next oh when my next arch video at least will be. I might do a couple more. We'll see. I I kind of enjoy doing them, and then and I've got a uh, quite a few ideas to cover. I do want to do some racing stuff, especially now that I've got this more sorted out the way I like it. I want to do a bit more to my status bar before I really talk about that because right now it's it's kind of. The standard status bar with a few changes like this this updates thing basically lists how many updates I've already downloaded without installing. And I need to fix the volume because it doesn't actually change. I, I just, it's the basic volume one. I don't know why it doesn't work. So yeah, I did the outro already, so I reckon I reckon that's pretty much it. I'm out.